Hi, this is Duncan Ferguson. This will be the first of a series on uh, thyroid physiology and medicine uh, de dedicated to diagnostic testing. Because we'll be uh, overviewing uh, the meshing of our clinical findings with tests, we would, uh, which we might want to use to screen a dog or really any animal for hypothyroidism, this unit will be a little longer than most. We'll focus on screening animals uh, in this unit, and then the next one we'll talk about um, uh, sort of the confirmation tests, uh, and those would be free T4 and TSH, um, or T4 and TSH combined, but in this unit we'll talk about T4, T3, and TSH when they're considered as individual tests. And in the third unit on diagnostic tests for hypothyroidism, we'll discuss special circumstances and special tests to aid the de determination of the pathogenesis of the disease. I would like to give uh, acknowledgement to a group I worked with um, about 10 years ago in 2003 um, who put together for the Society for Comparative Endocrinology some general uh, recommendations on diagnostic testing, and this was focused on the dog. And uh, the concepts that I will be talking about in, in this unit come out of that. The acronyms, um, you can read these over, we'll be using um, throughout the presentations are listed here. Um, hopefully you can refer to them as you need to, or go back to them. I'll try to uh, spell them out each time I use them. So the first thing is to take us from clinical signs. You have an animal that you think is you're 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 suspecting of having um, hypothyroidism, and the most important principle that I can recommend is that you you don't use thyroid values as a screening test for hypothyroidism. If you don't have clinical signs, you probably have no business trying to um, start measuring thyroid hormone levels. Many things will falsely lower T4 values. And this will be in animals that have, that are, have a normal thyroid gland or called euthyroid. And so, I'll state it again, screening an animal for hypothyroidism uh, without evidence of clinical signs or problems will lead you to overdiagnosis. Said another way, add diagnostic testing to signs consistent with disease and you improve your uh, likelihood of a successful diagnosis. A few good disclaimers and cautions, and these came directly out of the recommendations. First of all, realize that thyroid uh, insufficiency in the dog develops over time, and the diagnostic tests do not give you a yes or no answer every time. Some of the reason for this we now understand may be associated with the most common disorder called autoimmune thyroiditis that leads to discordant function early and late in disease. So you have to be aware of that. Also, I won't go into great detail on this in this unit, but realize that normal ranges may be necessary for each breed, but particularly note the sight hounds. The sight hounds will have T4 and free T4 values that are uh, much lower, in some cases around 50% of what you'd find in a, uh, other breeds and yet these animals are euthyroid, that is, they do not have thyroid disease. So we have an animal we think um, has hypothyroidism, we have clinical signs such as, you such as you see here, the bilateral symmetrical alopecia, um, possibly supporting the fact that the animal could have hypothyroidism. Um, you improve your diagnostic performance, your predictive value, predictive value by measuring thyroid values after seeing these signs. If you have other conditions or confounding ther therapies, drugs or non-thyroidal illness or, or other kinds of illness that could influence thyroid hormone values, and we'll talk about that, then I want to tell you up front that it's probably a good idea to wait. 
to make a diagnostic uh, test for thyroid disease. Most animals don't die of hypothyroidism. And if you don't wait to test and you consider testing immediately, then uh, the fact that there's other illnesses present or drugs present will influence the choice of tests. And we'll get into that specifically shortly. So hypothyroidism is a multi-systemic disorder. And in almost every case, and I'm an internist, so maybe I'm biased, you're going to be uh, wanting to do a complete Min, uh, minimum uh, medical workup that includes a complete blood count, a biochemical screening panel, and a urinalysis. And this is so that you can pick up on um, some manifestations of the disease uh, that you may not have suspected, and that you can rule out other conditions that are similar in presentation, such as Cushing's disease, or, or, or an animal that has um, other problems um, that look like the one you're, you're looking at at this point. A few details about the statistics or the terms that I'll be using, um, and, and this comes from some data that I'm going to show you. Uh, first of all, when we talk about sensitivity, it's the fraction of cases which are actually positive that are labeled as positive by the test. Um, and we'll use as an example right at the beginning, how T4 can be a screening test, but in this test, if it is normal, it rules out hypothyroidism. Specificity is the fraction of euthyroid dogs that have values in the reference range. So that is, do the numbers fall within the reference range, and does that, uh, how many animals do you miss if they're on either side of that? Accuracy is simply the fraction of cases that are neither falsely positive nor falsely negative. But the ones we'll focus on will mostly will be the first two, sensitivity and specificity. So let's take a look at a little data of the diagnostic value of a single or individual thyroid function test taken alone. T4, T3, and TSH are the most commonly measured tests. We'll discuss free T4 in the next unit. So we're going to focus on sensitivity here. Note that a good screening test has high sensitivity. Total T4 values, if normal, if normal, can rule out hypothyroidism based on one study in 89% of the cases. And these are cases that include not only animals suspected of having um, hypothyroidism, but also animals with other non-thyroidal illnesses. In another study, um, the second study that listed, if you remove those animals that have T4 autoantibodies in their serum, that is, they have autoimmune thyroiditis, the value of screening with T4 can go up to almost a perfect score of 100%. We'll talk more about anti-T4, T3, and anti-thyroglobulin autoantibodies as indicators of thyroid autoimmunity in the third unit on diagnosing the pathogenesis of hypothyroidism in a dog. Moving to the next column, I want to note and just spend just a little time that T3, measuring T3, is a very poor screening test for hypothyroidism. It can be lowered in illness. Uh, if you recall, the thyroid and extrathyroidal deiodination of thyroid hormones in a failing thyroid gland actually produces proportionately more T3 than in a normal euthyroid animal. This keeps T3 in a normal range longer. Also, in those animals that have T3 autoantibodies, um, T3 values will be inaccurate and will reduce the sensitivity of T3 as a screen for thyroid dysfunction. In the final column, we have TSH. And I'll make the note that we're unfortunate in veterinary medicine and unlike human medicine, uh, where this number would be close to 100%, we, on average, will miss about 25% of dogs. That is, TSH will not be elevated in about 25% of dogs with otherwise confirmed hypothyroidism. And that makes this a poorer screening test. But we'll talk later about how TSH is a valuable thing to measure uh, con in conjunction with a low T4 or free T4, particularly because an elevated TSH is 
uh, not seen in too many circumstances uh, in an animal. What we're saying is if TSH is normal, you can't rule out hypothyroidism in 25% of the cases. Some important points about total D4 measurement. First of all, you should recognize that breed can be a factor, um, and particularly it, T4 and even free T4 values can be lower in sight hounds. So you should realize that, that their numbers for normal ranges will be I mean, about half. Uh, also, as animals get older, T4 falls with age. So the normal range, at least in a dog, and it's also suspected in the cat, can be lower. Um, we know that chronic illness, uh, severe illness, can lead to T4 depression. And actually, the lower the T4, the poorer the pro prognosis for survival in sick animals. And finally, obesity can raise T4 and free T4. And uh, this is uh, seen, and it's seen in the cat, and to some extent in the dog as well. Uh, it's not a dramatic effect in the dog, but it's something to keep in mind. So, to get to how you interpret T4, let's reiterate. If T4 is normal, when we suspect hypothyroidism, it rules out hypothyroidism with about 90% certainty. You can make that 100% if you know the animal doesn't have anti-T4 autoantibodies. If the value is low, it does not confirm hypothyroidism. If the animal has a low T4 and it has an illness or there are drugs present, realize that this could be the reason it's, uh, that, that T4 could be low and you need to go on to do other testing. So that's the final thing. You need to go on to our next unit and see, listen to that because we'll talk about how you employ TSH and free T4 for that purpose. Let's review what uh, serum total T3 means to us. First, I'll uh, just summarize by saying it means very little uh, for the diagnosis of hypothyroidism, and it's not something I routinely recommend being measured because of that. It poorly correlates with the clinical condition. There are a couple of reasons for this. Uh, first of all, we know that when the thyroid starts to fail, uh, there are mechanisms both within the thyroid gland and extrathyroidally that lead to um, generate more T3 from T4 proportionally when T4 is insufficient and made in inadequate quantities. Uh, there are also technical reasons for why serum T3 might be uh, less useful and less sensitive as a diagnostic test for screening for hypothyroidism. First of all, animals with hypothyroidism, a fair proportion uh, in the order of about 5%, can have T3 autoantibodies that are suggestive of anti uh, autoimmune thyroiditis. And when they do, this makes the T3 value false. And it can be low, it can be high, it, it can still be in the normal range as well. And so T3 is not a valuable test. TSH um, is a, the measurement of TSH when it's high adds great value and specificity to the measurement of a low T4 or free T4. We'll go in more detail into that in the next unit. Um, but I wanted to say at this time that it is a poor screening test. This is an important point. Unlike in humans, if you were to take a dog, measure, um, TSH, and, and although I confirm hypothyroidism in that dog, you could miss 25% of those animals. The TSH would not be elevated. We're, we have some idea, um, some possible ideas for why this could be the case. It turns out dogs are different than humans, um, and for that matter, any other species that I've, I'm aware of. TSH will increase in the dog early in disease, so it increases early in disease. That's what we'd expect <clears throat> with a, a lack of negative feedback. 
and then it falls with chronic disease. And we don't know whether this, um, in, in, this is due to a resistance that develops or due to some sort of pituitary exhaustion. Um, I doubt the latter, but um, nonetheless, it, it, it seen, it's been reported to occur in dogs that have had hypothyroidism for, we're not talking about a couple of months, but a couple of years. Whether it relates to the clinical condition is not yet known. The other possibility, which is a physiological possibility, is that there's pulsatile release of TSH seen in hypothyroid dogs, but most of the data would suggest that it doesn't lead to a value that falls into the normal range very often. So, to summarize the principles of screening for hypothyroidism in the dog, uh, first of all, you measure TSH, and if you do that for screening, you'll have the odds of about 10% of missing uh, dogs that have uh, that are euthyroid if T4 is normal. So that's the point. You have to phrase the question properly. If T4 is normal, you rule out the condition. And you can make that almost 100% or make it 0% missing uh, cases if you had ruled out T4 autoantibodies and you know that the actual value you're measuring for T4 is valid. Uh, the second thing is I generally pay almost no attention to total T3 values or poor screening test. TSH is also a poor screening test, very unfortunately for us um, in veterinary medicine. And there, the reasons for that are that statistically about 25% of the animals are, will have a normal TSH uh, despite having other diseases, uh, other evidence for hypothyroidism that is. 